Hi guys, it's Tracy with The Vintage Life. I'm here in the Kansas City area and I love hunting, thrifting, upcycling, and reselling vintage items and great old junk in my retail booth at the Brass Armadillo in Grain Valley, Missouri. This is gonna be a thrift flip video. I'm gonna show you some items that we thrifted in our last haul, uh, the befores, the process of what we did to those to upcycle them, and then the afters. If you guys enjoy these kinds of videos, then please subscribe to my channel, click the like button and the notification bell, and that way you'll be notified of future videos when I put those up. Let's get into the video. All but one of these are just small decor pieces that we found while we were thrifting. In fact, I think they all came from the same Savers location in Liberty, Missouri. There is one piece that was a friend find from my girlfriend Kendra, the small round wooden rooster tray. Uh, she picked that up at a local garage sale and she does such a great job. She finds the greatest old junk. I think she thrifts vicariously for me and finds me really great stuff. Um, I've, I've really had a lot of fun with the pieces that she's found for me. Now, almost all of the small decor pieces that I upcycle, I usually start out, after I clean them, I start out with a coat of primer. Some get a coat of white primer, some get a coat of black primer, but I usually will either spray or brush on a coat of primer before I ever put on any paint. And I was very excited because I just received two new colors of DIY chalk paint. Uh, water lily and French millinery and I was very excited to use those the French millinery I mixed up with some baking soda I wanted to put some texture on a couple of these pieces so on the large ceramic pig and this owl planter mixed up that baking soda and paint and um, put a coat of that on both of those pieces I really had grand plans for this large ceramic piggy bank. I wanted to do the texture paint and white wax, but you'll see that's, that's not how it went. <laughs> so then I moved on to some plain white chalk paint, thinned that down, wanted to put a layer on the cookbook holder because I knew I wanted to put some transfers on that. I wanted a coat of white underneath the transfers. The small ceramic piggy bank, I really didn't know what direction I wanted to go in, so I thought, let's just start with a coat of white paint and see where we end up. And then the little miniature desk. Um, I, I knew I wanted to paint it white and put some transfers on it. Um, it took so long to get just one coat of chalk paint on this thing, but, uh, but I finally got, finally got it covered. And then the rolling pin, I knew I just wanted to add some color to the handles and distress those back. This little wooden rooster tray had been worn down to the bare wood. I really liked the look of this tray. I just kind of wanted to restore it. So I grabbed my Waverly Antiquing Wax and full strength just went right back over that bare wood to kind of match up the finish. Um, and then I wiped that back with a paper towel. A little hanging basket uh, that I had also had some nicks that needed to be touched up, did the same thing, just wiped on some antiquing wax and then wiped that back. And then I cut the antiquing wax with a little water to dilute it so that it wasn't quite so dark. I wanted to richen up this basket but not make it too terribly dark. Um, you do have to be careful when you're flinging around and taking wax though, especially if you got freshly painted white pieces on your table. And once I was finished covering the basket with antiquing wax, I just wiped it back with a paper towel. And I couldn't have been more thrilled to discover that I had almost a full can of spray chalk paint laying around the house. So I was able to finish up that little desk without having to cover it in 18,000 layers of paint by hand. And since I have the spray can out, I went ahead and did the birdhouse too. I let all the painted pieces dry overnight, top coated them with a clear coat, let that dry overnight, and then it was time for transfers. I 
I had also just purchased my very first couple of sets of IOD stamps, so I was dying to give those a try. Now, while I bought the stamps, I did not buy a brayer and I did not buy a block. So it was a little bit of trial and error. I thought that I could maybe use chalk paint. I just put on a thin layer and then tried to press them down evenly. It, it took a couple of tries to get it right. Now, because I put on a top coat before I started the transfers or the stamps, I was able to wipe the stamps off when I messed them up. Top coating before you stamp makes it very easy to clean up a mistake if you make one. So after several tries, I finally got an impression that I felt would work with the distressed and chippy and vintage feel that I was going for. Now I did buy a thin mount sheet and I tried that with one of the larger stamps and thought that worked much, much better. The thin mount worked pretty well with this medium sized dragonfly stamp as well. All in all, with the stamps and the transfers and the distressing, I loved the way this piece turned out. I also added a couple of transfers to the cookbook holder. It came out exactly like I thought it would in my head. I love when that happens. After the transfers and the stamps were added to the cookbook holder and the mini desk, I sanded those to distress them and I sealed them both with a coat of wax. After seeing how beautiful that color water lily was on the stamps, I wanted to paint a couple of pieces with that color. So that's the direction I ended up going with with the small piggy pink. I covered him in water lily and then I ended up using white wax to finish him off. I also decided to try Water Lily on the birdhouse. I knew I was gonna put some transfers on there too, but I thought the Water Lily with the transfers would be really beautiful. So I cut out some individual transfers and then applied each one around all four sides of the house. And then I used white wax to seal the piece and to give it a little dimension. Wax is such a great sealer for chalk paint, you just paint it on and wipe it right back off. Let it dry overnight and then buff it and it's gorgeous. So here's the large piggy bank after I had finished the coat of texture paint. I was originally thinking I was gonna finish him with white wax. But then I second guessed myself and thought, oh, I've got some gold gilding wax, I'll try that. I tried highlighting him. I tried giving him an all over gilding wax sheen. I tried wiping it back and I just could not get happy with the finish. So I decided to go in a different direction. I painted the entire piggy over in DIY's copper patina, 
pennies from heaven. And then I topped him off with dark wax. This is a beautiful finish. Dark wax is just as easy to work with as any other color wax. You just rub it all on, then wipe it back off, and then buff, buff, buff. And since I have the dark wax out, I thought I'd go ahead and make the handles on this rolling pin just a little more antique -y. Now take a look at these beautiful afters. Hope you enjoyed this video. I sure had a ton of fun remaking these items and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.